In this video, we are going to learn how to write new themes for a film scoring project. We're going to use all the notes that we've taken so far on the short film The Foundling to start writing the primary theme for the film. Now, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, don't worry, because the strategy we're going to cover can be applied to any project you work on. So with that, let's get started. So my sketching process has three steps. Summarize the inspiration for your theme. Use that summary to brainstorm different strategies for the music, and then use those strategies to come up with a few different options for what the theme should be. In the first step, all we need to do is review the notes that we've taken on the film so far. From these notes, I can remind myself that this theme needs to be used three different times. Once for each moment in the film where the mother character needs to make a decision. In each scene, she needs to decide if she's going to continue living her life by trying to fit in and get acceptance from others, or if she will finally realize that a happier life actually comes from just accepting yourself. Keeping this information in mind, I want to write a quick concept for my theme. A theme's concept is just a short paragraph that describes the personality and role of the theme. The golden rule behind this description is that it should contain just enough detail on the inspiration for your theme that another composer could use it to write music that would still fit with the story. Now, this is a really important step because this paragraph will serve as a reminder of what your music needs to accomplish. While you're actually writing the theme, it can be very easy to just get lost down a long rabbit hole of different ideas that sound good to you, but just don't serve the story. If you're not careful, you can end up spending hours just writing this beautiful piece of music that just won't work for the film you're working on. Having this paragraph on standby helps ensure that you have a constant reminder of what exactly your music needs to accomplish. This is my concept for the theme. This theme represents an invitation to truth and to happiness. The invitation is constant but uncompromising. The happiness it offers is authentic, but it isn't the happiness that the world tries to sell. From the outside, it doesn't even look like it could possibly be happiness. It's just too different from what you would expect. But if you accept it, you'll find that it wasn't the invitation that was strange, but your own perspective of happiness that was warped. Because of this, it should sound ambiguous. Something that can be viewed as beautiful by those who have accepted it, but deceptive and untrustworthy by those who haven't. Now take your time with writing this concept, as it really is an important step to this process. And once you have finished it, the next step is to just quickly scan it, to look for the most important words you use to describe the music. These words are going to be what you actually use to start brainstorming the different strategies for writing your music. My list is constant and uncompromising, authentic happiness but unexpected, and ambiguous, so beautiful to some but untrustworthy to others. Step two is to start brainstorming different strategies for portraying your theme's concept musically. My personal approach to this is to split music into nine different parameters, and then address each of these one at a time. I'll brainstorm how each individual parameter can be used to help portray the different ideas in my list of key words. Now, we don't have time in this video to discuss my entire process for this, but if you are curious about what exact questions I ask for each parameter, I have a book dedicated to this entire process. But for now, let's just take a look at some of the most promising strategies I came up with while brainstorming each parameter. For a tempo, I came up with two different strategies. The first is to stick to a tempo around 60 beats per minute, which is the equivalent of one beat per second. This can help underline the constant nature of the invitation by relating it to time. The second is to include a layer in the music dedicated to much quicker subdivisions of the beat, something around 16th or 32nd notes. This layer will add a bit of subtle energy to the music that could be portrayed as either building excitement towards something better or as building tension towards something worse. Next is texture. Texture just simply refers to the number and types of layers in the music. I know that I want at least three different layers. The melody, the bass line, and the fluttering layer that I came up with for tempo. However, for the bass line, I think I want to work with just a simple drone or a pedal tone. Having a bass line that never or rarely changes notes could really help tie down the idea of being constant and uncompromising. It could also be really fun to just double this same idea above the melody in a high pedal or drone. For rhythm, I've got a few different ideas. I want to emphasize beat one of each measure. I want to use some syncopation to kind of drive home the idea of true happiness not really fitting within a preconceived box. And along these same lines, I want to avoid using 4-4 four, four time. 4-4 four, four time is just so common, and it's literally called common time, so I want to try something different. For melody, I want to use lots of tension tones that don't necessarily appear in the harmony below. 
This can help create a more ambiguous and slightly more dissonant sound that would work well for both items two and three on my list of keywords. Other than this, I don't really have any specific ideas. Other than it could be fun to work with some large leaps within the melody, and not just typical stepwise movement. Finally, for the harmony, I have a few different ideas. I want to work in a minor key to kind of drive home concept number two from my keywords. But to keep things from sounding too dark, I'll also want to borrow from the parallel Dorian to give a more kind of whimsical feel. I'm open to using seventh chords and chord extensions beyond the triad. And I want to make sure that the final cadence is super weak. This last point is just super important. This entire theme is supposed to be an invitation to the character. The other two themes I need to write are going to act as answers to this one theme. So I want to make sure that this one feels open-ended, like it needs to be answered. I'd also like it if I could use this cadence to pull me towards a new key. So these strategies are going to inform each of the decisions I make while writing my theme. Taking the time to figure these out before I started sketching my music is going to help make sure that I stay on track and don't lose sight of what my theme needs to sound like. It's also going to help take away some of the pressure from needing to come up with something from scratch, since now I have plenty of ideas to help get me started. So let's move to step three, which is sketching the theme. While sketching, I always start by setting up my tempo and my meter first. So following the strategies from my notes, I am going to set my tempo to 60 BPM and my meter to 7-8 time. Now I'm going with 7-8 time because it's only one eighth note shorter than 4-4 four, four time. Which is enough to sound strange when compared to common time, but it also offers a really cool opportunity for that flutter layer I want to write, and I'll be explaining that when we get to that. So with my tempo and meter figured out, I want to quickly write out my chord palette. And a chord palette is just a simple list of all the chords I'm going to allow myself to choose from. During my brainstorming, I said I wanted to work in the minor key, but also borrow chords from the parallel Dorian. I also said that I wanted to work with anything from triads to chord extensions. For this, I'm going to start out by just writing out the key of my piece. I'm going to start with A minor, since that's the simplest minor key to work with, and I can always transpose my theme to a new key later if I need to. I'll start by writing out all the triads for this key, along with their chord functions and Roman numerals. Now, if you're getting a little lost here, I recommend checking out my playlist on Harmony for Composers after you finish this video. After writing the triads, I'll add the seventh scale degrees to each chord, and then each of the available tensions. After this, I'll write out the characteristic chords from A Dorian, and call it good. This is my chord palette. I can choose any of the chords I want from this list. Now, I'm going to start my chord progression by picking my very first chord. And here I'm going to focus on the tonic, or the very first chord of A minor, to help establish the key right away. Now I can choose the triad, I can choose the seventh, or any combination of the available tensions. But after trying a couple different options, I found that I really enjoyed the A minor 7 sound the most. <laughs> So next, I need to figure out how I'm going to end the chord progression by choosing a cadence, and I'm going to work with a half cadence, since they're the weakest. A half cadence means that I'm just going to end the progression on a dominant 7th chord. Now there are two different dominant 7 chords available on my chord palette. The first is the E dominant 7, which belongs to the key of A minor, which would result in a sound that really wants to pull me back to the same key at the beginning of the next phrase. But when I was brainstorming different strategies, I decided that I want this theme to invite the listener to a new key. So I'm going to try the other dominant 7, which is the D dominant 7, from the parallel Dorian. D7 really wants to resolve to the key of G major. So that works perfectly for my strategy. So now that I have both my first and last chord figured out, it's just a simple matter of filling in the rest of the space by using a pattern of strong chord, weak chord. Any combination of the chords will work. After some experimenting, I came up with this chord progression.
So you'll notice that I used inversions as necessary to keep my baseline on just a repeating A. This keeps with the strategy that I came up with during step two of our process. The only time it actually moves is in the very last bar, when it moves down a perfect fifth to D. Moving down by a perfect fifth is a very strong movement of resolution. And the feeling of having movement in the baseline for the first time also really helps prepare the idea that I want to change keys. So now that I have my chord progression and my bass line, the next thing I want to do is to write my melody. And for this, I'm going to use the prevade method that I explained at length in this video. The first thing I'm going to do is create an interesting shape of intervals above my chords. In step two, I said that I wanted my melody to use notes from outside of the harmony and use several leaps throughout. Now, B doesn't actually belong in the underlying chord of A minor 7, but it is included as a potential tension for my chord palette. So I know that it will still work. Now, next, I am going to leap up to a G, which does actually belong in the underlying chord, but since it's the seventh of the chord, it's going to have a much more ambiguous personality than the other available chordal tones. In measure two, I'm going to start things off with an F sharp because that's the characteristic note of the Dorian mode. Meaning that it's the one note that turns A minor into A Dorian. It is part of our underlying chord, but since it's from outside of the key, it still creates a really cool effect. And then finally, I am going to move up to an A for no other reason than I just like the way it sounds. So with this general shape in place, all I need to do is add rhythmic elements and embellishing tones to end up with this, a simple motif that I can work with. Now, by following the rules of Prevade, I know that I need to repeat this motif during the next two measures with just a few minor changes. Then in measures five and six, I need a much stronger variation. That sounds almost like a new motivic idea before ending the whole thing with a cadence in the final two measures. Now, again, if you would like a refresher on writing melodies, I have an entire playlist dedicated to this very topic. Now, with my chords, bassline, and melody all figured out, the last thing I need to do is to come up with my flutter layer that I mentioned in the brainstorming phrase. So let's do that. So for the flutter layer, I think a really simple arpeggio would work very nicely. And this is actually why I chose to work in 7-8 time. As I mentioned earlier, 7-8 time is only one eighth note shorter than 4-4 four -four time. And this means that I can easily create a kind of subtle jolt in my music by treating the very first note of the next measure, almost like I'm still working in 4-4 four, four time, but each measure overlaps by one eighth note. Now, to do this, I need to make sure that the first note of each measure also functions as the last note of my previous arpeggios pattern. And the easiest way to do this is to just follow the bass line. So I'm going to have each measure start on A. After this, let's just move backwards. So treating each A as the last note of the previous measure, I'm just going to simply move up the full chord in an arpeggio of 16th notes. Next, I need to make sure that the pattern also starts on A. So I will follow suit with another arpeggio at the beginning of the measure. And with the beginning and the ending figured out, it's just a simple matter of filling in the rest of the space with any combination of chordal tones that I want. Then I can just take this entire pattern and repeat it through the entire phrase, just making whatever adjustments as needed to make sure that the arpeggio follows the underlying chords. And with that, I have all three layers that I originally wanted for this sketch. From here, I'll typically try coming up with a few different options of different variations of this theme so that I can pick my favorite option to apply to the film. In the next video, we are going to start spotting the different scenes to figure out where each theme can be used and how they'll have to be adapted and edited to fit the film. But for now, let's give a quick listen to what this sounds like.
So with that, we have reached the ending of another video, and I want to take a very quick moment to thank you and all of my patrons who have made this video possible. If you would like to show your support for this channel, the links for private lessons, purchasing a copy of my book, and to my Patreon page are all in the description of this video. So until next time, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.